Welcome to Decide to Transform. You made it to level two. Deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Hello, hello, and excellent, excellent, pleasant day to you. You're listening to Decide to Transform, and I am your host, Tomas Garza. I am excited about today's program because we have today a very, very important and very fun topic, and one that a lot of people do not treat as very fun because it involves conscious effort, and it involves a commitment. But what we wanna to do today is talk about the importance of that commitment and the importance of the subject because it's all important. Whatever walk of life you are in, whatever your profession, whatever your relationship status, wherever you live in the world, whatever it is that you do, today's topic is critical. It's absolutely critical and we're going to spend some time on it. And we're gonna have fun, because this does need to be fun. And that topic today is self-care. The importance of your self-care and your self-care routine. This is a word that I'll say throughout the day, your self-care routine. And I've titled the show today, Selfish in a Good Way. And yes, you heard that right, selfish in a good way, the importance of self-care. I insist on this in my life and in my work life and practice. And there are so many reasons why it's important for us to take care of ourselves and we will go through them. It's critical and I insist on it when I work with clients, it's one of the first questions that I ask them is what are your self-care practices? What do you do for yourself? What do you do to take time, make time for yourself and your own well-being? And the word wellness is one clearly that gets tossed around. People consider themselves wellness experts, wellness coaches. They have wellness themed podcasts. They write wellness themed books talking about myself in that, maybe you too, if you're listening out there. What constitutes wellness? Well, a critical component is making time to make sure that you're at your best. And that's really what it's all about. And there's a quote that I love. It's a quote that I see around the internet on people's Facebook feeds, on their LinkedIn feed. And I never see it as attributed to one particular person. However, it's this, if you don't take time for your wellness, you'll be forced to take time for your illness. Worth repeating. If you don't take time for your wellness, you'll be forced to take time for your illness. How true. I love that as a quote because it's true. If we neglect ourselves, we suffer. What happens then? Everyone else around us suffers and things can go south on us, can they not? They can really and truly deteriorate and it doesn't have to be that way. We can make a decision to focus on that self-care and our wellness. Okay, so what exactly constitutes self-care? This is a question that I get a lot and I see it a lot on online discussion forums. And you may feel like you have the answer to this and this is an area in which you are expert, but bear in mind there are people listening right now that are not so good at this. You may know people like this. You may know people that give and give and give and give and they give some more and give and give 
and neglect themselves. And you may know them well. You may be that person. You may have a spouse or a child or a family member that is in that position. Now, if you in particular are in that position, this is going to be a hard hitting show for you. And I want you to tune in and I want you to, if you're listening live, pay attention and wait until the end of the hour, until the end of the show to go do something else, because this is critical and it could radically alter and transform your life. This commitment is critical. So nurses out there, I'm talking to you. If you're a professional caregiver, I'm talking to you. If you are a person that has a professionally defined role as a caregiver, you cannot neglect yourself. Now, not everybody has a professionally defined role like caregiver, like care provider, like a nurse or anything like that. It could just be your MO in life. There are people that don't get paid to give care to relatives, to friends, to family, and they give and give and give and give. And I see it all too often that these people neglect themselves. They neglect themselves. And we'll talk with a couple of hard hitting pointed listener questions on the show today about why that is and what people can do about it. All right. So let's, if you're in the position of caregiver, you cannot neglect yourself. It's really critical. It's really critical. And even if you don't get paid to give care, if you're in that position, pay attention to today's show and to what we're talking about, because it may change your life and the lives of those around you. And isn't that, if you're giving care, what you want to positively affect the lives of those around you? I think that we all know instinctively that you cannot pour from an empty cup. You can turn the cup upside down, but only air comes out or maybe the last couple of drops of liquid. If you had a glass of water, maybe a couple of dribbles come down and out and that's about it. So this is all about the importance of refill and filling your cup back up. So if you are good at this, understand that there are always ways we can get better. If you positively focus on your self care, you may be able to help others. And there may be some things that you hear today that will be of value to you as you make your self care routine or practice more fun or more prevalent in your life because they're both important. So when I'm talking about self-care, what exactly do I mean? This is another very frequent question. Well, it depends on you. So much depends on the individual and what they like to do, what their interests are. For some people, self-care could be a trip to the gym. And for some people, it's a quick two, maybe three minute meditation practice, right? Breathing or taking a pause to go for a walk. All right, a couple of weeks ago on the show, my friend Lisa Berry and I talked about making time and blocking time out to create some mental space, which is a form of healthcare. Um, well, it is healthcare, actually, not in the uh, technical sense that we think of healthcare as in healthcare providers, but it's very healthy for you. It's, it's wellness to block time and block physical space off for yourself. So what does this look like? Does it look like a bath if you're in a cold climate? I know it's January 21st. My wife and I are at the beach in Mexico right now live and it's sunny and the waves are beautiful. And actually I will take you through a beach walk later on in the show as a live example of a self-care ritual and what this can look like. So stay tuned for that. This could be a trip to the gym for you. It could be cooking a meal, reading a good book, going fishing, just going for a drive. Changes of scenery are always good. So whatever it is, it's just really critical and it's important. And there is 
a common phrase from the airline industry that I love, that I have used repeatedly dozens and dozens of times in my professional life as a teacher, as a coach, as a trainer, dozens and dozens of times. And that is what you hear every time you board an airplane before you take off. They have the safety instructions and you'll see somebody next to you fall already asleep. Yeah, there's a kid picking his nose, not paying attention. The guy next to you is reading a magazine during the safety instructions. They, and it's not like I always pay attention to them either, but there's something that's said that's directly relevant and I love it. And it's put your own mask on first, then assist others. Right? Put your own mask on first, then assist others when they're talking about the operation of the oxygen mask system. And yeah, it, it, uh, it rarely happens, of course, that the oxygen masks will drop down mid-flight, but in case they do, they always brief you. And why? Why do you put your own mask on first? Let's say you're traveling with the kid next to you picking his nose. Right? He can't reach it. You have to help him with it. However, if you pass out, then who's going to help your child? If you pass out at 35,000 feet, who's going to help the kid next to you? And you're right. You heard the answer. Well, no one. Maybe the person next to you, if there's someone seated in your row or nearby that's not preoccupied with their own mask. So put your own mask on first, then assist others. That applies to life. It applies directly to life. If you have kids, you know that they need you at your best as much as you can be all the time. And that could look differently day to day. You could get sick or you could have less energy one day than you did the day before. And that's okay. As long as you're showing up, doing your best, it's put your own mask on and take time to fill your cup. Otherwise, the question is, what are you giving to people? What are you giving to people? Which leads me to our very first question, a listener question that is actually general. I've been asked this dozens of times throughout my business career in workshops and as a conflict resolution instructor. This was years ago, actually, in a past career life, as I like to call it, several years ago. But one of the things, I used to teach a class at Portland State University called Managing Family Conflicts. And we would talk about conflicts with siblings, with spouses, with our parents, with children, all kinds of different things. And in that class, we had special exercises and special workshops, which I won't do on the air today because they're very hands-on. But the point was to emphasize the importance in a family setting of this very concept of put your own mask on first, then assist others. Because as a parent, if you're a parent, you will know your, your kids need you to be as best as you can be at your level best on a given day. So the general question would always go like this. People would say, I really find it hard to take time for myself. I find it hard to prioritize myself. And here's the kicker. It's easy to do for others, but I just can't seem to do it for me. Let me read that last sentence again. It's easy to do for others, but I just can't seem to do it for me. What are your suggestions? That's the question. And here is the answer. It's multifaceted and it will take more than a few minutes to go through it because there are many parts. We just talked about the catchphrase, put your own mask on first, then assist others. That's part of the answer. It's part of the answer. And in a family dynamic, for example, if there is a hectic link or a weak link or someone who's a basket case, that energy is easily transmuted. It's sent and shared to the entire group. If somebody's a wreck, everybody's going to feel it. If you are not at your best on a given day and you start the day off, anxious, hasty, hyperventilating, short of breath, afraid, everybody's going to feel that. 
No, they're not. I mean, they can't help but to do that, especially in a nuclear family or especially in a scenario where you're all living together or in close contact with one another. So put your own mask on first, then assist others. But you can't really help somebody if you're a nervous wreck. You might think that you can still help somebody if you're a nervous wreck, but I disagree. And, you know, you don't have to agree with me on that. Another thing that I want to point out here, in response to the question, this is something that's very important, is to choose and commit to a practice of self-care. Choose, decide on what you're going to do and make a commitment to it. Stay consistent. If it's closing yourself off in your room for five minutes and breathing deeply, then let that be what you need to do. If it's taking a walk every day, do that, right? Take time out of work on your break and go for a walk in the fresh air if you're working in an office scenario. And whatever that constitutes for you, make sure you do that. Choose a practice and commit to a practice. And the reality is, for each of us, our gifts are so much more powerful when they come from a place of love as opposed to a sense of obligation or duty. Yeah, if it's just your job to care for people, it doesn't mean that you have to do that completely devoid of feeling and without feeling and love and energy, but it can seem like that. We really place a lot of obligations on ourselves as human beings, don't we? And our gifts are much more powerful when they're from a better place, when they're from a stronger state and point of view. And I will explain some more about that as we continue to go through this really, really good, really pointed question here. We'll take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. You're listening to Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. I Om FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Did you know that you have the power to change anything in your life? Did you know you can do so even with the things that you've already decided are impossible to change? Come join me, Venus Castleberg, on Outside the Impossible as I interview people from around the globe that have literally changed the things they thought were impossible to change just by using the amazing tools of Access Consciousness. Now airing Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Do you dare to believe that anything really is possible? Hi, I'm Tomas Garza author of Decide and host of Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. I want to ask you, if you want something in life, have you decided on it? If not, you'll listen to a limiting story about yourself. You will say you can't, you're too old, too young, etc. Decide to transform in life. Learn what you can choose to believe instead of your limiting stories. Decide. Available now in paperback and ebook. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, 
I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. I'm your host, Tomas Garza. And before the break, we were looking at a very common question that I've gotten in various contexts, in various work and professional and actually life contexts as well. And that is the situation where somebody says that they find it very, very hard to make time for themselves and to prioritize themselves And I often hear, it's easy to do for other people, but I find it hard to do it for myself. I just can't seem to do it for me, is a phrase that I've heard so often. And if you're out there and you say that to other people about yourself, then please, 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 it's very critically important that you pay attention. We have to, each of us, choose and commit to a practice of self-care, whatever that looks like for whatever amount of time we spend on that every day. It's committing to it. Very important. Because the gifts that we give people, so don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't give to others. Yes, we must give to others. We're all in service to others. I'm in service to you all as listeners. I'm in service to every single one of my readers, listeners, people I come into contact with worldwide clients, people that I train, people that I reach out to on a professional level, just people that, even people that we meet on the street that we may never see again. We're always in service. We're always giving a gift. So what are you giving people? That's the question. Another way of putting that is what are you teaching? Because like it or not, whether you hold yourself out as a teacher or an instructor, you don't have to professionally. We're always teaching people why we're always interacting with people, even if it's online. Even if you hold yourself up in your room and you never actually have a phone call or an in-person conversation with somebody and you communicate solely online, uh, I would find that really, really difficult. I guess that's the PG-13 way of putting it. I wouldn't do that. But if if you do, you're still communicating. You're still teaching. We are vibrational beings. That really goes without saying. And it's not like we need conclusive scientific proof of that. Because if you get up in the morning and you start screaming at people and you tell people off and you scowl and glare and exude a bad energy... What are you teaching? You're teaching people that they need to stay away from you. Right? They're teaching you. You're teaching them. They're teaching you. And you're teaching them something. And it's not positive. However, if you smile at people and you're pleasant, you're conveying a message, aren't you? You're conveying a message that not only you're happy, but also other people are worthy and you're happy that they're in your life. And this could be walking down the street and saying hello to a complete stranger. It could be just as simple as that. So the question is, what vibe are you giving off? What are you teaching? Because your gifts that you give people, such as a smile, a wave, hello, even a nod, anything, they're so much more powerful when they're from a place of love, and I do mean of self-love, than if they come from a sense of obligation or duty or something that you consider just your job. Because when you hear somebody say, oh, it's just my job, how does that make you feel? It makes or it makes me feel personally like somebody that's saying that just says it because that's what they've been trained to say. And in other words, they've trained themselves to say that it's just my job. To me, that conveys a sense of not being into what you're doing, right? Of not putting your heart into it, if that works for you. And what happens is you reach a higher vibration by taking time to rejuvenate and to care for yourself. It doesn't mean you have to abandon 
your job and your kids and go on a three-week personal spa retreat in Costa Rica. As nice as that may sound to some of you, that's not what I'm talking about. And if that is self-care for you, then fantastic, wonderful. But you reach a higher vibe by taking the time in your daily life. All of what I want to talk about on this show is what you can do practically in your daily life to effect a massive transformation in your life. And it's the little things that matter. It's making a decision to do it in the first place and then committing to the practice. And you commit to it by coming back to it time and time again, even when you don't feel like it, even when you're sick. Okay? If you're sick, there's no time like the present for self-care. You've got to take care of yourself, even if that means a four-hour nap in the middle of the day. You've got to do what it's got, what's got to be done. But you have to do what you have to do on that. And you reach that higher vibration of love by continuing to go back to taking time for yourself. Several ways of making time. And if you need to schedule it, well, then schedule it. And... One question I have to ask you, if you neglect yourself, is is it really so hard to take a few minutes out of your day, out of your supposedly busy day, which I'm not buying, and take time for yourself? Is it really that hard? And here's the answer that I often get. This is a, a listener question, very, very interesting, very, very poignant question. This is from Krista from New York. And Krista, thank you so much for submitting this question. By the way, Krista submitted this online at tomas at tomasgarza.com, my email address, which is the best way to reach me. If we're connected on Messenger, then please, by all means, on Facebook Messenger, send me a question. I love to get these listener questions on the air. So Krista, thank you very much for your transparency on this, because this is a hard-hitting, transparent question. And I absolutely love that you've submitted it because I know that there are people out there all over the world that experience the same issue. And kudos to you for having the bravery to step up and ask. And I know this is going to resonate with some of you. Krista's question is, I'm having a hard time shaking the selfish label I put on taking time for myself. What are your suggestions? I'll read, I'll read that one more time here. I'm having a hard time shaking the selfish label that I put on taking time for myself. Suggestions? Well, yes, and, and thank you for the question. Again, number one is we all deserve to be at our best. We do. You may not think that you're worthy of a walk on the beach, but I promise you, you are worthy of a walk on the beach, if you live on the beach, if that's self-care for you. You're worthy of taking time out for yourself. You're worthy of going to the gym. You're worthy of investing a short period of time, it can be, for yourself in reading a book or whatever this looks like for you. You are worthy at it, and you deserve to be at your best. And here's something. If you find yourself in a position where you give and give and give, other people deserve to have you at your best too. If you are depleted, then again, we just talked about this. What are you teaching? What are you demonstrating? What are you showing to other people? You and others deserve to have you at your best, and that can only happen if you take time out for yourself. And you can consider this, I invite anyone to consider Phrasing it differently, if you want, you know, if it's me time or rejuvenation, chill time, a break, whatever term you use, it's not selfish. And I'll say that again, it, it's not selfish to take time out for yourself. Now, the title of the show might suggest otherwise to you. It says selfish in a good way. So let's make a distinction right here, right now, in no uncertain terms between good selfish and bad selfish. Right, because bad selfish we think of 
ego, uh, an ego trip, egotistical, someone taking and taking and taking, and a leech or a vampire or an energy vampire or somebody that sucks the life force from other living beings. And if that sounds harsh or graphic, we all know people like that. I think each of us can relate to knowing somebody, whether it's a family member or somebody we went to school with, that is an energy vampire. We run across those people that drain us of our life force. Don't we? We're not talking about that. We're not talking about an attitude of me, 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 me to the exclusion of everyone else. We're talking about committing to a practice of selfish in a good way of taking time for yourself so that you can give more so that you can give more effectively more powerfully more lovingly and if this helps you to say okay well if all else fails i'm just going to be selfish for five minutes then you know i say it's not selfish but if you want to go with the phrase, it's selfish in a good way, then go with that. And it, I would say that it's okay. It's okay and it's essential because other people need us at our best. And this is a common. Christus question is very, very common. And I will also say here that I have heard this from people time and again is that they have a hard time shaking the label of selfish and it makes perfect sense it does it makes perfect sense because we're all told as kids to share right share your candy right share this share your toys don't be selfish and we get that message drilled into our head and some of the things that we have drilled into our head as kids serve us well Right? If our mom tells us, for example, hey, look both ways before you cross the street, well, that's basic safety. That's a good message to get. But not every message that we get from people, from our parents, from school, from teachers is positive. Right? And not every message serves us. And some messages may serve us during certain periods of time in our lives. I like to call them seasons. And some messages become stale and no longer serve us. And it's up to us as discerning adults to decide to let those go, to release them. So for what that's worth, Krista, thank you so much for the question. And I will also, I would like to say that if you're interested in submitting listener questions, then please do. It's Tomas at TomasGarza.com or send me a message on Facebook. Actually, some of the most poignant and directive listener questions have come that way if we're connected on there and you are always welcome to send me a friend request it's tomas garza i've got the spanish accent mark over the a and there's my uh, this my picture uh, in there i'm wearing a white shirt so uh, you can find me on facebook if you'd like here i'd love to listen to these questions and read them on the air all right so thank you krista for that let's move on to something that's really, really important here. And this is the main reason people neglect self-care, because you may be one of them. You may know people that neglect themselves, and you'll want to, when this link becomes available, forward the link to them so they can download and listen to the show, because it might help them very, very much. And the reason that people neglect their self-care is almost always largely it's a manifestation of fear it is it's a manifestation of fear so how does that show up well there are a million ways you can see if you look and if you look within if you're doing some of these maybe you can relate there are a million ways this shows up and it's all fear-based but people can over schedule themselves do you know any over schedulers are you one do you take refuge in your busyness? Not business, but busyness. And I often go on to add, and I am going to add right now, your supposed busyness. Supposed. Yes, I don't believe you. Uh, not all of you, anyway. How many people do you know that wear their busyness like a badge of honor. They run around saying, oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I'm just too busy. I'm just so busy these days. Oh. 
and maybe they are, but often they're not, and they're just saying it. So if you are too busy for your self-care, then clearly, if that's in fact the case, you've got to drop some of the busyness. That, that's one way that people avoid it. And people delay things. This is the, well, I'll do it when I've got myself organized. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll start this wellness regimen. I'll go to the gym when I've got myself organized. Or, you know, we'll wait until next week or, or next month or next year. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm just kind of getting organized. That's a delay. A delay tactic is fear of jumping in. Call it like I see it, right? Because you should do the same. Um, <laughs> this is just the way it is with some people. And you may know people like this. They delay and they delay and they delay. And they constantly find something else to do, some other reason to put off or avoid something that they know is going to be really good for them. Have you made a New Year's resolution to get fit and healthy? It's January. If you did, it's the 21st of January. Have you kept it? Have you even started? Only you would know. Those are questions. So people can be overly busy. They can overschedule themselves. They can delay. And another thing that we commonly see are people putting down self-care. I am a meditation instructor, and I have had people make all kinds of excuses and tell me all sorts of things to my face, even why this is stupid. <laughs> I can't, I have to laugh because I know that it's not. And you may know that your own self-care regimen is highly beneficial for you. And if others were to incorporate it into their lives, they might also reap the benefits. Knowing that of course is one thing and having somebody else figure that out for themselves is quite another. Notice I didn't say try to convince them, forget that. That's preposterous, right? And it's just a waste of energy and effort. People have to figure this out for themselves, but you do see people belittling self-care, poo-pooing it, all kinds of different avoidance tactics that are all fear. So how do you overcome this fear? Let's talk about that on the other side of the commercial here. You're listening. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com. <laughs> My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, host of Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. Thank you for listening. You know, there's only so much we can cover on a one-hour show. If you'd like to hear further from me, I happily offer personalized teachings. Get your very own voice recording or book a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Ask a burning question and gain clarity on achieving massive transformation in your life. Details available on my website. TomasGarza.com. I am Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family, and then boom! 
everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back to Decide to Transform. I'm your host, Tomas Garza, and you've been listening to some techniques and some tips and ways that you can be selfish in a good way. In other words, focusing on your self-care. Now, on the other end of the break, we were looking at some of the delay tactics, the avoidance tactics that people put into place to put off taking care of themselves. And this is a delay tactic like overscheduling yourself or saying that you're too busy or putting something down or, or poo-pooing it, uh, thinking that something's beneath you because it, it works and it's healthy, for example. But all kinds of things, delays, all of them fear-based, and these are things that we as human beings do in every aspect of our lives. It doesn't have to be self-care that we're talking about. That just happens to be the subject of today's show. So how do you overcome this fear? Well, it's okay to feel it. This is something that I always say, and I, I always will say this because it's normal and okay. If you're afraid, that's okay. It's okay to be afraid. It's natural. Change can be scary. Change can freak people out. It can be uncomfortable. In fact, it, it almost always is uncomfortable on some level. And what it takes to move through that, number one, I don't believe, and this is something that some people may disagree with, but I don't believe that it's a wonderful adage to say, oh, hey, kick fear in the face. People say that, and to the extent that that works for you, great. But you really don't have an opponent here. There's no opponent with which to do mental or physical or spiritual violence because you have the power to decide. And this is how you overcome fear is you move past it. You do not bludgeon it. You do not punch it. Although if that helps you, great. I'll present an alternative. What I'm presenting is something that will be different then, and you can choose to accept or reject it or think about it. And maybe you do all three. I don't know. But it's committing to a practice of self-care. So whatever that looks like for you, and we'll talk about this at the end of the show here, is but what does that look like, and how do you get clear about that? So when you commit to a practice and decide on a self-care regimen, just stay committed to it, be consistent with it, and yes, be selfish about it. Put that in your schedule. If you are a scheduler, put that in your schedule and treat it as non-negotiable. In other words, it's got to be something really, really important for you to neglect that. And it's really an important piece because we neglect ourselves all the time. Something else seems immediate and it diverts our attention, but insist on this. And yes, be selfish, and as the title of the show today suggests, selfish in a good way. That's how you move past the sense of fear and then acknowledge that it exists, yes, and you can move through it and move past it without bludgeoning it. If you bludgeon it and kick it and beat it in the face, fantastic. That's absolutely fine, right? If that works for you, but you don't have to. You can decide on something that's positive for you, self-care, and go with it and be consistent with it. So what are some examples of this? You may know, and if you're listening and you have these regimens and these schedules, these routines put in place in your life, that is fantastic. Please continue to do so. Now, if you do not, then this is really important because people often say, well, I don't know what to do. What do I do? Well, what do you enjoy doing? Are you a reader? Do you like physical activity do you like to cook? 
Uh, do you like naps? I mean, a nap can be self-care, most definitely. Do you like to be alone? Okay, find a way to create that space for yourself. And one of the things that I always recommend, and I recommend that you do this, if you're struggling to put together a self-care routine or a regimen or practice, whatever word you want to use in there, if this is something that you're not sure about, look at others' practices and I would say get creative. Just look at what other people are doing and get creative. Does it apply to you? Okay, well, if going to the gym for four hours a day doesn't apply to you, fantastic, you don't have to do that. Just do something else. So you can look around and see what people are doing. All right, and if you want a visual, a more sensory example, then let's go through one right now. now as I said earlier in the broadcast, my wife Cindy and I are at the beach in Mexico. We have a beach house. We'll be here. We've been here for several months in the Mexican state of Yucatan, and we'll continue to be here for a few more weeks. Literally, guys, the beach is right out our back door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you for a virtual detailed walk on the beach for a few minutes so you can see what somebody's self-care ritual looks like. Now, while I could just do this, I'm not going to do it right now because I'll lose the Wi-Fi connection and the broadcast will be interrupted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to virtually, of course, take you through this. And I'm going to stand up and walk out the back door. And now I'm standing on a big back patio and it's covered with dirt right now. I've picked up all the trash that blew in from the beach this morning. Uh, not so pleasant visual, but hey, it happens. We've had a windstorm here for the past day and a half and the wind has finally died down. When that happens, it always leaves some residue. So I've picked the trash up off the back porch and there's a sand pathway that winds its way between some shrubs and out to the beach and here i am looking at the wind and the waves and the wind on the waves i can hear the wind because it's still blowing and there are more waves today than usual so you can hear the sound of them crashing and picture that in your mind. Let this be a waking conscious meditation, if you prefer. We all remember times where we were on the beach, even if it was very infrequent for you, even if this is something you have not done in years. It could be that some of you have never been to the beach before. I don't know. If that is the case, you can certainly imagine and feel the wind, smell the salt air, and hear and see the waves as they lap up on the shore. And here in our backyard, there are seashells that wash up. A surprising number of seashells. Sometimes hundreds of them wash up on a stretch of beach and it covers the sand. They're all bleached white, but some of them are very large and pink and purple. There are spiral shaped shells. There are pieces of coral that wash up, conch shells, and you can literally walk for many, many meters at a time on top of seashells here. And this is the coast of the Mexican state of Yucatan on the Gulf of Mexico. There are dead horseshoe crabs on the beach. If you've ever seen a horseshoe crab, they're very ancient animals and there are several that have washed up. You can see their skeletons on the beach, which are really interesting armored looking creatures. And if you want to, and I often do, just wade right out into the surf. The water's nice and cool. You can swim in the Gulf of Mexico year-round. It's hotter, I'll tell you, right um, in April and May and the summertime. 
in the summertime, if you're listening in Australia, it would be winter for you. But summertime here in North America, the water is, of course, a little warmer, but you can still swim in it. I swam in there a couple of weeks ago. That's a piece of self-care. Swim in the ocean. And today, the waves are a little higher than usual. This is often a very, very calm body of water. Sometimes in the morning and even sometimes in the afternoon and evening, the water is very still and there are virtually no waves. And it looks like glass. So try to imagine that, if you can, as a self-care ritual. Now you may be saying, well, I don't live on the beach and I don't have that kind of leisure to be able to do that. And that's all right. What can you do right now today? Can you picture yourself getting up from your desk and stretching, taking a five to 10 minute stretch break and going for a walk and committing to do that several times a day to make yourself feel better? Because really this is about what you can do to make yourself feel better. So I hope you enjoyed our virtual walk on the beach. This is one of my self-care rituals and one that I always try to do. In fact, I've done a really nice long beach walk this morning. And if you live on the beach, you can do the same. If you prefer to live in the mountains and go for a walk in the snow or the forest, then absolutely, it's beautiful. Do what is available to you. And as I always say, just take what applies to you, but make sure, please, that whatever line of work that you're in, whatever your daily calendar looks like, really whatever schedule it is or how busy you may seem, please take time out for yourself and commit to a practice of self-care because not only do you need it, we all need it because we're all vibrational what are you putting out there? That's my question. What are you putting out there? Make sure that it's love. Make sure it's peace. And commit to a practice of self-care. So, we have a few minutes left. And I hope that you've gotten some good tips and some inspiration. And if you are in a helping profession, or you're not in a helping profession, but you're engaged in giving constant care to others, please know how critical it is to them as well as to yourself that you take time for yourself. So we're talking forms of personal transformation here, and I'm very happy to announce, some of you may know this already, if you have just tuned in, we have a very special guest teacher next week. It's my good friend, Lisa Berry, who's the host of Light on Living here on Ohm Times Radio. Lisa was with us on the show two weeks ago on January 7th, and you'll want to listen to that show archived wherever you listen to podcasts. It's called Self-Talk Transformation. And we're going to continue the Self-Talk Transformation theme next week right here live on the show on Decide to Transform. The date is the 28th of January, all right? January 28th, Lisa will be back and will continue the theme of self-talk transformation. We'll be talking about unconscious success. In other words, we'll be going through some self-care tips and practices to help you get down into your subconscious with your self-talk. What do you tell yourself? We talked a couple weeks ago about different forms of mind chatter, and Lisa gave some suggestions for what she does to help declutter her mind, so to speak, to help move her mind chatter from a place of distraction and not serving to a place of serving a greater purpose. You do this enough, you begin to affect your subconscious mind, and we will show you some successful situations. Now, what I invite you to do is, last time Lisa was on the show, we had a couple of really good questions from listeners, and we did have time to answer one on the broadcast. So, 
she loves to be put on the spot by really pointed listener questions. So I invite you to put Lisa on the spot next week as she joins me on the show. And this is all in a good way. She knows I'm going I'm to tell her this, actually, that um, I've invited people to put her on the spot. She likes it. So don't worry about that. But please let me know that, um, that you have a question about self-talk. If you have questions that you want Lisa to answer, the question is identify the top way that your own self-talk hinders you and we'll workshop it on the air. Okay, I invite you to do that. Send me an email, tomas at tomasgarza.com or send me a message on Facebook. Again, the question that we want to ask Lisa next week is, what is the top way that your self-talk hinders you? And we'll workshop that on the air. We'll ask her. You can ask for her advice. She has done many things in her life that have been highly beneficial, not just to her, but to everyone around her. So you're going to enjoy the show. High energy. Look forward to it. This has been great. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next week on Ohm Times Radio. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs>